Hello, my name is Edward Lebduk and I'm a sales engineer at InterSystems. For the last few years I've been working with Python and I'm very excited about it being a part of InterSystems Iris now. In this session I'd like to tell you about using embedded Python in your interoperability projects. Welcome to the session Embedded Python with Interoperability. And during this session we talk about embedded Python a little. Um, mainly we'll talk about embedded Python and how you can use it in interoperability, various business hosts and so on. And finally we'll see a demo of a, a simple but uh, fully functioning solution uh, based on the IoT and AWS. The code, by the way, is available on GitHub so you can easily recreate the demo locally if you want to. So let's start with embedded Python. It is a complete fusion of Python and InterSystem Cyrus. The runtime is essentially the same allows you zero cost uh, move between Python and uh, object script worlds. Python objects are first class citizens in Iris and uh, vice versa. You can access to globals. In fact, here is all the ways to use embedded Python. You can call methods and class methods, access objects, call SQL procedures, use any Python modules and libraries in Iris and also use Iris objects in uh, Python. So you can uh, mix and match Python ob and object script pretty freely in the same application uh, the way you need to. For more details on uh, this basic building blocks please refer to the specialized sessions. Uh, I will talk more about it at the end of the session. So, let's move to embedded Python in interoperability. Um, first of all, limitations. There are no limitations. You can use embedded Python anywhere in any type of a business host, business service, process, operation, uh, adapter, um, data transformations, business rules, whatever, really, anywhere you want to. One consideration for business processes and especially for BPL business processes is that unlike all other types of business hosts, BP and BPLs are state machines, uh, so one state to the other you can change jobs, so you need to remember to persist everything you need between states as context properties. You need to remember to re-need the modules in uh, in a case where the job changes. And remember that if you want to persist some Python data for small objects uh, without particular internal structures, you can use JSON. And for arbitrary objects, uh, for example, models, you need to use pickle or deal modules or something like this, or in some cases specialized uh, module specific save load methods if they are available. One other consideration is that root methods should be written in object scripts, so callbacks such as on init, on message, um, on request, on error and so on. They must be written in object script, but we can easily call uh, methods written in Python. We'll see some examples in our demo. But before we go to the demo, let's talk about two implementations, uh, two ways to call Python, which are currently available, which are embedded Python and Python Gateway, and which one you should choose. Um, you should choose embedded Python if uh, you want Python out of the box, don't want to think about installing Python and maintaining it. If most of the flow is in object script, but you just need this one library, this one call in Python, and if you need cal to perform calculations close to data, because in, in the case of embedded Python, data stays in the same process. You need to use Python Gateway if you want to implement control flow entirely in Python. 
Uh, if you need specific Python version and not 387, which we currently uh, provide, and if you require processing on a separate machine or container. It doesn't matter if you want to work with object script, objects, methods and so on, both embedded Python and Python Gateway support it out of the box. So, uh, based on these considerations, you need to choose what's the best tool for you, embedded Python or Python Gateway. And now let's go to a demo. Our demo is completely dockerized and available on GitHub. So it starts with the OPC UA server where OPC is an IoT protocol to publish metrics from sensors, their values and so on. It's used in IoT, I IoT and so on. Uh, and on the InterSystem service side we have OPC UA client which is a business service. Um, getting data from OPC US server and saving it into a database. It's, uh, it saves metric values. And next we have monitoring service and uh, some thresholds configured, which uh, queries this table and if uh, sensor values exceed the threshold, it, would sa it sends a message to the AWS business operation, which is again in Python and uh, this AWS uh, operation creates SNS client and sends SMS messages with uh, notifications. So let's see how it works. First of all our admin view with production configuration where you can see query service which is currently active and loads the data. It has some settings. We query our server every five seconds and uh, there are some settings where the server is and which node to query. Currently we query all children of my object node and in object script, well, in, and in Python it looks like this. So we have a normal business so extend, uh, query service which extends our business service basic adapter some some properties person client holds our reference to a client and nodes hold references to all our nodes which we would query and in only need we create our client get our basic parent node and subscribe to all the children. We store them in a database for, for later reference and fill our nodes array. And on process input every five seconds we iterate over our nodes call read value method. Note that node is a Python object and read value is a Python method which we call normally, as we would call an object script method, get a current uh, sensor value and store it in a database. And on teardown we disconnect from OPC UA server. And if we go to our SQL window, we can see our node values. Last. Uh, check was just here, let's wait for 5 seconds and run the square again and we will see the timestamp would be would be more recent. 35, 46, yeah, <coughs> 45, 51. Okay, so that's the first part. We saved our data into a database, into InterSystem Cyrus and our table are thresholds. You see we have uh, two thresholds for node 1 if the value exceeds 10 it's a warning and 15 it's an error. So we have a monitoring service which queries our table and if node values exceed <coughs> thresholds we send a request to the AWS operation. And AWS operation, again it's a normal business operation where we first init 
Note that uh, our Python initialization code um, is called from on init and not directly. So we have pyinit method which is written entirely in Python. Um, we import Butterfree which is an AWS library and uh, set some properties which are defined on object script side. So we set client property which is SNS client and we set to JSON property to a dumps method because in uh, Python variables are first class citizens we can do it. Dumps is a, is a function but it's also an, uh, an object. Here are our properties defined in, in our operation class and finally in on message we get our request it contains only the message body we call send sms method which uh, uses our client object and calls publish method on it uh, and we serialize the response and check the http code if it's 200 we report that everything is fine and if it's not 200 we report an error let's see how it works I can start monitoring stories but I can also just test here is my message something like hello world let me invoke it and on visual trace I receive AWS response pretty immediately it just signifies that AWS got my message, not that it's been delivered yet. And I see that status cut is 200, so everything is fine. And not sure if you have heard it, but I just got an SMS message on my phone number. So it's been uh, successfully delivered. And that finishes our demo. To repeat, we started connecting to the OPC US server, getting data from it and saving into a database. And after that, using AWS client business operation to send SMS message to a phone number which must be notified in because of errors or some such. To sum up, Embedded Python allows you to execute Python code in inter-system series. You can use it anywhere in any type of a business host where there are no limitations. Uh, so it's a pretty new technology with Embedded Python, but I hope it would be useful to you. And here are some other sessions which talk about Embedded Python. Uh, uh, especially check out the experience lab when you where you can get a hands-on experience with embedded Python some resources I hope you get this presentations as a PDF file and um, here are links to the repository with the code from the demo I showed you today and some other examples of embedded Python and interoperability usage. And with that, I'd like to say thank you for your attention. Goodbye.